Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another commentary. And today I'd like to uh, see what the Bible has to say about hyperdimensionality <laughs> and what started this uh, little search through the Bible. Uh, was an article in Scientific American. And I'm going to read the opening uh, <clears throat> comment from this article. If you, me, and every person and thing in the cosmos were actually characters in some giant computer game, we would not necessarily know it. The idea that the universe is a simulation uh, sounds more like uh, the plot to the Matrix, but it is also a legitimate scientific hypothesis uh, researchers uh, pondered this uh, notion over and over again, and they are still pondering it. And uh, a lot of them are speaking on the subject of hyperdimensionality. That is the idea that <clears throat> mathematics may at last prove that we're living in a multi-level universe, that the reality that we see around us is, uh, is not the entire reality. And science is very proud of itself uh, in terms of beginning to make such discoveries. Uh, a popular argument, goes the article, uh, a popular argument for the simulation hypothesis came from the University, University of Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom back in 2003 when he suggested that members of an advanced civilization with enormous computing power might decide to run simulations of their ancestors. And uh, they would probably have the ability to run many, many simulations to the point that the, where the vast majority of minds would actually be artificial ones uh, within such simulations rather than the original ancestral minds. So simple statistics suggest it's much more likely that we are among the simulated minds. Uh, science is searching <clears throat> for uh, reality. Science is uh, like every other human being uh, on planet Earth, uh, a scientist is curious about his origins and about his destination. Now, we as Christians have a book that tells us all about that. Uh, but science is still trying to prove mathematically that there are different levels of reality. We have the physical reality. There may be a dimension just above us and another dimension just above that or surrounding it. And uh, they have postulated at least 12 dimensions mathematically. And they're on the search for a reality that they can, that they can grasp and understand. You know, I would call it looking for God. That's not what they call it. But what I wanted to show you in reaction to this idea is what the Bible says about hyperdimensionality. <clears throat> uh, I go back to 2 Kings chapter 2 uh, where Elijah and Elisha are walking along. And uh, starting in verse 9 it says, And it came to pass uh, when they were gone over, Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, and before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. E Elisha wanted a double uh, portion of the prophetic spirit that, God, that Elijah had already demonstrated. And he said, Thou hast to ask a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. It came to pass, as they uh, still went on and talked, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. I take it that that means that he saw Elijah depart. Elisha saw this phenomenal event, and when the, the Bible says they went up into heaven, uh, what does that mean? They went into another dimension. Verse 12 says, Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold on his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And so that's the story of uh, Elijah departing from the uh, uh, company of Elisha. I think Elijah went into another dimension. And why do I say that? Well, because I turn my Bible forward to uh, the New Testament, uh, Matthew chapter 17, and it reads this way, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain, 
apart and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with them. So what happened? Peter, James, and John, when they went with Jesus up the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw something they weren't prepared for. They, they saw the opening, if you will, uh, a, an interdimensional window between this earth and heaven. And they saw Moses and Elijah. Well, we left Elijah all the way back in Second Kings when he went up in the chariot of heaven. And here he is appearing on the Mount of Transfiguration. So the Bible is, is very, very uh, open about the fact that the, we live in a multidimensional uh, world. <clears throat> and we come forward to Acts now. And I'm thinking of those scientists who with their mathematics are trying to prove uh, a multidimensional universe. The Bible speaks of it matter-of-factly. Uh, you remember the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7. <clears throat> uh, Stephen is testifying about the reality of Christ and about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the uh, Jewish fathers, the religious fathers, did not look upon this lightly. Uh, they thought that he was blaspheming. Uh, and it says in, um, in uh, Acts 7.54, when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, that is Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So uh, apparently there was a, an aperture of some sort that opened between this dimension and that dimension. Stephen saw the Father and the Son with his own eyes and he said, Behold I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And of course that's another story. But what happened here? What happened uh, basically is that uh, a window was opened between this dimension and that one. And so by faith we accept hyperdimensionality, multidimensionality. Uh, we've all read Revelation uh, chapter 4. John uh, is testifying and he says, After this I looked and behold a door was opened uh, in heaven uh, and the first voice w which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately uh, I was in the Spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and sat on the throne. So John passed from this dimension to that one he saw a, a number of marvelous things uh, that he wrote about. That became the book of Revelation. And then he came back to the island of Patmos after that. And so uh, in a very matter-of-fact way we discover uh, that the Bible speaks uh, of people passing from this dimension into that dimension. And it's fascinating that when you, when you look at these things uh, and, and actually see what the Bible says it makes you take a whole new look at what the scientists and the mathematicians are saying. Uh, there is a uh, story, I should say a narrative, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We've all read this, but in context it says, um, I, Paul says in Ephesians, or 2 Corinthians 12, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And then he says, I knew a man above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, uh, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And so Paul declares that he too penetrated the interdimensional uh, barrier. Now I, I find this really uh, fascinating. Why? Because that's where I'm going. <laughs> that's my destination. Uh, I, I have been born again. Uh, uh, through the finished work uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ I've been born again in the Spirit. And my destiny is, is not a, a cold grave somewhere. My destiny is to walk in heaven uh, with the Father and with the Son. 
And when I read these testimonies, it always just, you know, picks me up and encourages me. And it makes me understand that it's not only the mathematicians and the scientists who are talking about multidimensional reality, it's the Bible. Here's an interesting, uh, I call it a, uh, a throwaway line. We can read right past it and never even notice it unless someone calls it to our attention. This is in Ephesians chapter 3 uh, where uh, Paul is speaking words of blessing. 317 in Ephesians, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might uh, be, a, be filled with the fullness of God. Now notice that Paul uh, references four dimensions here. Breadth, length, depth, and height. Of course you have width and you have depth and you have height and that describes any three-dimensional object. But what about that fourth dimension? What is, what is that one? And Paul talks about it. He calls it the breadth. I would call it time-space because the Bible speaks authoritatively of the time-space continuum. Uh, it, ordinarily we just speak of it as the spirit world. But what science is looking for with math we already see by faith. Just a little something to think about today as you go about your normal daily life. Uh, think about those four dimensions. Paul says, I hope that you can comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And may you be blessed today. Talk to you again very soon. I'm Gary Stearman. We're watching. You keep watching too. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.